Hello, hello, Fortnite fans, Nubis here. After Era's untimely demise, I finally decided to listen to the many comments asking me to try EasyFN. If you don't know what EasyFN is, it's another game server similar to how Era worked, but it's primarily for console and mobile, though of course it exists for PC as well. And after Era's death, it became the number one game server around. However, my very first impressions weren't very good. 15 players is pretty rough. But I needed my chapter one itch scratched, and after three months of nothing, I'll take anything. Being on season seven, though, you know exactly where I had to drop in game one. I missed you so much. Polo gave me some decent loot this game, nothing special, but with half of the 15 player lobby left, a plane decided to show his face and try to attack me. Though I hadn't really played Fortnite in a while, so Big Booty 69 was the agent of my demise this time. Only 12 people in the lobby game too, and I'm going shifty. Though even with only 12 people, it felt so good to be back playing this version of the game. Since May, I've been trying out everything that I could under the sun. UEFN recreations, reload, etc. And none of them gave me anywhere close to the feeling of just playing the real deal. It just feels right. And EZFN isn't even close to being as one-to-one one as era was, and it still feels leagues better than any UEFN recreation I've played. Though the small lobbies were gonna be a problem. By this point in playing, I definitely couldn't see myself sustaining content on EZFN. There's just not enough people. Like, please enlighten me. How am I supposed to commentate over this? There's literally nothing going on. And when I did finally run into someone in this game, it was two people at once, and I definitely was not surviving that encounter. These player counts just keep getting more depressing. Nine people in game three. Oh, but I am so excited to use the pre-nerf AK again. With four people left in not even the final circle, I got my first kill. Now it is the final circle because there's nothing else to talk about, and I'm watching the other two players fight it out. And when the game did turn into a 1v1, I quickly grabbed high ground. And I kept the other guy at bay with my double pumps. Yeah, that's a thing in EZFN. I'll talk about it later. It's pretty busted. However, in the end, I only needed a single pump to get my first win on EZFN. In game four, I landed Polar Peak again. I can't help it. I was doing pretty well until I got trick-shotted. Game 5, to avoid that happening ever again, I hopped on EU servers, and oh, apparently this is where it's at. 85 players. Yeah, EU servers get very full lobbies pretty much all hours of the day. So while my first impressions weren't the best, this confirmed to me that I could pretty reliably make videos on EZFN. And not to mention, my ping to their EU servers is way better than my ping to ERA's EU servers ever was. So yeah, despite my lackluster first impressions, EZFN on EU servers specifically is really good. Anyway, I'm now in a 1v1 in a full lobby where it's actually hard to get to a 1v1 with double spaz. And I guess there's no better time than now to talk about double pump. Yeah, double pump on season 7, and especially double spaz, is probably one of the most busted things I've ever used in this game. It really shouldn't be here. I know they held a vote on whether to include it or not, and it was a resounding yes, but honestly, it just spits in the face of game balancing. And since EZFN is primarily mobile players, they don't use double pump. It's only the good players who can wipe the lobby with it. The existence of double pump on EZFN really just only serves to hurt their main player base. But as long as it's here, I'm gonna use it. Because if I have to fight someone using double pump and I don't have it, chances are I'm gonna lose, and I don't really want to take that chance. But in this game, I didn't have to bring out the big guns. I just shot this guy out of the sky with the scar for the win. This game, this guy, the sky, the scar. That was an unintentional tongue twister and a half, Jesus. Surprised I got that line in one take. We're off to a great start in Viking Village in game six. He brought me all the way down to seven health, but I still did manage to kill him. Thankfully, Viking has some natural campfires I can use to power up. Later outside of Lazy Links, I got into my first dogfight on EZFN. And these things are still as fun as they've always been. The other pilot bailed early, how lame. And for the crime of aborting our dogfight, I aborted him post-birth, of course. However, mere seconds later, I was mogged by the gamer coach underscore YT. Good to know he's still here to shit on me even after Era died. Sliding into the top 10 and Salty Springs in game 7, I wonder what I'll find here. Actually nothing, but there was plenty of fighting going on right outside. Oh lord, it's actually someone who knows how to play this game. This fight took a very long time, I almost caught him lacking there, but unfortunately I don't know how to aim. Ultimately it was his mistake that he was only carrying one spaz that got him killed this game. Now armed with a scar, spaz, minigun, and rocket launcher, there's really not anything any rapscallion can do against me. I'm sure the last guy knew I had a rocket launcher, I'm really not sure why he thought it was a good idea to leave his wall open. I rudely interrupted a fight in Paradise Palms in Game 8. Everyone involved was pretty good, but here's exhibit number one on why Double Pump is absolutely busted. And here's exhibit number two, except this time I'm on the receiving end. Dropping into Tomato Temple in Game 9, and I cannot believe that until a couple of months ago, I did not know that this little secret area was here. It spawns two chests, can get you some decent loot if you're lucky, and I can pretty much guarantee that it will never be contested. However, in this game, the loot I got was less than good. Honestly, I could go as far to say it's probably some of the worst loot I could have gotten. Good loot, bad loot doesn't change the fact that I still gotta fight this guy, man, he actually got a shotgun. Made it to the top 10 in game 10, where I was unceremoniously landed on by two people at Frank. Fortunately for me though, I already had double spaz. And as I already explained earlier, this is like one of the most busted things that could possibly be in Fortnite. I mean, the spaz is already insane in season seven. Who at EZFN thought it was a good idea to allow you to carry two of them? Well, now it's a 1v1. And alongside double pump, I also have a gold AK. Certainly one of the games of all time. I feel like this game should just be shown to the EZFN people to prove that they should remove double pump. 
that, that was insane. I'm not lying when I say I spent the entirety of game 11 hanging around Stunt Mountain. I mean, it just kept being in the zone and people kept coming up to me. There was no reason to leave. Eventually, Stunt Mountain did leave the zone, though, so I grabbed a plane so I could search for the two last people in the match. I found one of them hiding out in the shack of shame trying out Double Pump. You probably should have used it on me instead of the air. In a 1v1, I flew around desperately looking for the last guy. I just couldn't see him anywhere. That is until I eventually got out of my plane and he just appeared next to me, drinking a juice box. Oh, these players really put the easy in easy FN. In game 12, I found a toddler who had just learned to walk stumbling outside of Tilted Towers. I sang her a lullaby and put her to sleep real quick, but I was still outside of Tilted, and I was caught lacking. Never a good time when that happens. I had a death wish in game 13, so I'm dropping into Salty Springs. And you gotta know, it was incredibly salty. Oh god. I was able to hold out for a lot longer than I thought I would, but yeah, I wasn't making out of that alive. Dropped onto a purple AK in Retail Row in game 14. This is already going way better than last time. In the bookstore, my bad connection helped me to confuse this John Wick and take him down. So now with a purple AK, double pump, and a minigun, I'm coming to take my revenge on Salty Springs. It was just a complete bloodbath. I was just double pumping everyone in my way. And I didn't feel as bad about it as I usually do because at least these were clearly not mobile players. This guy I'd say was even better than me, but I still pumped his face full of lead. In the middle of washing my hands of the blood of those three people that I just murdered, I was also murdered. Man, that's Salty Springs for you. Just constant bloodshed. In game 15, I went Viking Village and left some pretty good loot, but no shotgun. But even post-mortem, the greasy pro shop always provides. The first soul I reaped in this game was this John Wick outside of Grandma's house. He provided me with double spaz. Now I'm definitely winning this game. Down on the ground where the weather's nicer and the people are more rabid, I skillfully dodged this rocket and sent this bunny skin to the gods. With the zone bringing me back towards Salty Springs, I sprayed my revenge into this man. And then soon after, minigun my way to victory. Hell yeah, brother, you always gotta love a good minigun win. Blew my way out of Paradise Palms on a quad crasher in game 16. You wanna know why UEFN recreations will never be successful? It's cause you can't do this. I wanted to grab myself a plane up at the expedition outpost, but instead I grabbed myself two felonies and two consecutive life sentences. Coming out of the storm later, I shot at a man who seems to want to build up everywhere except for where my bullets were coming from. Turns out he was getting sandwich. That's unfortunate. Couldn't be me. It's fine though. I avenged him with just one shot on my burst rifle. Final circle was closing around frosty flights. That's good for me. I got 30 wins landing here. But then the server decided to just randomly crash. That's great. Yeah, easy offense servers are a lot more unstable than errors ever were. And they always seem to crash when I was in a good position to win. And never when I'm running towards Dusty Divot in the top 15 with no shields like this guy. Though their servers seem to be about as stable as my life decisions. I saw a lot of people fighting in Tilton and decided that was the place to be. What's well, the place that you can be for about a minute before you get seriously dunked on. I probably could have survived a little bit longer if I actually knew how to aim, but it seems like all that knowledge went out the window. In game 18, I watched a man try and shoot me with the scoped revolver, and then immediately get smited for his decision to carry that gun. In the final circle, I killed a sparkle specialist, and then used her essence to make this dude dance until he was dead. I probably should have carried boogie bombs more. I'm just always scared to dance myself, because that always seems to happen. But in this game, I actually used them very well, and I danced my way all the way to the victory royale. I didn't start recording game 19 till there were only 8 people left, but don't worry, there's still plenty to cover. I tried to stray away from using the planes as much as I did in Dire Season 7, but there's still so much fun I can't resist. I also have double spaz, so of course I cleaned this fight up fast. Still in my plane with four people left in Lonely Lodge, and I'm dive bombing this fish. Before I could deal with him, though, this renegade raider crouch walked up to me. This skin means even less here than it did in Era. It's basically just another default. And now it's a 1v1. I thought this was going to be the fish, but I guess it's this John Wick. I have no idea what happened to the fish. I plead innocent to his death. Johnny Boy here wasn't the worst player ever, but he was still too weak to handle my minigun. And finally, game 20 is some duos with Jackus. I knew how much he liked Era, so I definitely wanted to get him on EZFN. We landed Lazy Links and got some pretty solid loot, and then used this vending machine to get even better loot. Down at Dusty Divot, we spectated this going on at the Broken House. While we were paying attention to that, some Someone unrelated tried to give us a piece, but I shut her down real quick. While trying to run to the store, we were shot at by a duo on top of the Team Rumble Mountain. This angered the Wick Squad, so I sniped the one who dared challenge us and double pumped his friend who desperately was trying to save his life. Damn, my snipes were on point this game. Brought it to a 2v1 without even breaking a sweat. Then, from on top of the spire, this poor little soccer skin thought she could challenge the senior sweat skin. So I sniped her for her hubris and carried Jackus to his first win on EZFN. So, that's the end of the 20 drops. What are my final thoughts on EZFN? I think it's very good, especially on EU servers since they actually get good player numbers. The lobbies are way, way easier than Era, which isn't a bad thing. Sometimes that makes it feel more authentic, but other times I just wish there was a little bit more challenge, but it's not really a big issue. It's also not nearly as one-to-one -one as Era was, not only in that it's more buggy, which since recording this video, a lot have been fixed to be fair, but it's still a little bit jankier than Era, but also in the way that they make more non-historically accurate changes than Era did, namely unvaulting the burst, which I think is way more common than it should be, and unvaulting double pump, which as I explained earlier in the video, I think is a bad decision. Overall though, I had a great time with 
with these 20 games, and if I have to, I would have no qualms with continuing making videos on EZFN. However, there has been a new development that has happened since I recorded this. Era is coming back, somehow. So what my plan is currently, is if I can successfully record, edit, and release the second half of 100 Drop Season 8, and Era is still alive and not sued into the ground, I will go back to Era exclusively. But if I can't do that, well, welcome EZFN. I really don't think that would be a bad thing. Anyway, I hope to see you all again soon. I am moving into college in about a week and a half, so that might throw a wrench into my workflow for a bit. But otherwise, the future looks bright for this channel, and I look forward to making much more for you all. See you soon, and goodbye for now.